Okay, hello everyone. My name is Taegyung Kim from SK Telecom Korea. Today, I will present the covert VDPay workflow from host to hot to domain, which is VM. So here is brief overview of what we will cover today. Uh, first, I will introduce the switch dev driver model to control the pass-through SRV VFs. And then I will compare VDPay, the Vertio data pass acceleration with uh, VOSNet, which is the default Vertio net model in Covert currently. And then I will introduce how to manage the NIG resources in a Kubernetes way. Lastly, I will introduce VOS VDPay network binding plugin that I implemented to utilize VDPay on the Kubevault. To provide some context, Petasus Cloud is the SK Telecom's in-house built-in MEC platform, which uses a centralized SDN controller for OVS. So within this platform, we learned the tenant Kubernetes inside the containerized VMs. Uh, we don't use the primary network interface for the tenant Kubernetes, we just use the second secondary network interface to ensure the backward compatibility with the existing solutions of the Petasus cloud. I think uh, this is very simple and smart way to leverage Kubert ecosystem while preserving the existing our solutions. So because of this, so what we are talking about this presentation is for the secondary network interface. So what happens if we don't have switch step driver model? So in the legacy model, in the legacy mode, uh, when you allocate the VF to the DPTK or QMU with the VFI or PCI driver, you lose the entire controllability, controllability to the VF. Because it is passed through and there is no other channel to see the or to control the VF. But in the switch dev model, the, it is different. So when you create a VF, then the corresponding representer is also created. So the representer becomes a handle to the control of the VF, even though you bind the VFI PCI driver to the VF and give it to the DPDK or QMU. So what does the representer do in switch dev model? First, we can configure the network connection of the representee, which is the SRV VF. Second, we can apply RT flow or TCH flow rules to the representee. When we apply the flow rules to the representer, then the actual packet processing is also applied to the representee, which is operated inside the hardware NIC. So third, the representer becomes a slow pass before deciding the fast pass flow rules. So let's see the detail. For example, in OVS, the representer is used to record flow rules in the NIC hardware. Uh, the the e switch embedded switch maintains the OVS flow rule cache internally inside the NIC. If it has a rule for ingress or egress packet, then apply the rules to the packet and then forward to the PF or VF or the physical internet ports as usual. But uh, if the e switch does not know how to handle the packet, how to process the packet because of the some kind of uh, cache miss or timeout of the flow rules. Uh, then it forwards the packet to the representer to ask how to handle it. So the packet just likewise other ordinary, other normal common uh, network interfaces, the packet traverses the kernel network stack, including, for example, Linux bridge or OBS bridge. After that, the result of the traverse is recorded into the e switch. Uh, the number four in this slide. So this is the principle how switch step, especially for NVIDIA ConnectX, implement hardware overload. 
So I don't include demo in my presentation. Instead, I paste some command to configure the entire uh, architecture, entire solution. So if you want to enable SRV on ConnectX, you should turn on some options on the firmware and uh, reboot if required. After that, uh, you can see the devlink command. After that, you can use devlink command to change the operation mode of the NIC from legacy mode to the switch dev mode. And then you will see the representer interfaces when you create a new SRV VMs. So as, dry, as described in the first slide, the Petasus cloud has its own OBS control plane. So we, in this presentation, we assume OBS hardware offload. The only thing you have to do is turn on the hardware offload options in OBS. The OBS kernel will translate the OBS flow rules into the kernel TC flow rules. And then the ConnectX NIC eSwitch can understand the translated TC flow rules. And then the, the packet processing described by the TC flow rules are processed inside the eSwitch. So for simple test, we create a network namespace and move the VF into these namespaces before going to the cookbook and uh, more topics. Uh, so before sending a ping, I watch the representer with the TCP dump to see what kind of packet is going through the slow pass, especially for the uh, representer to look up the flow rules that are not in the usage. So if you run ping, you can see the just ALP and the first ICMP from the representer. So the result of the TCP dump. Uh, so but uh, the the left test, the presenter test namespace does not know uh, such kind of operations. Uh, everything is uh, processed in the, inside the usage and the the representer at uh, the the VF will see the ICMP request from one to ten, uh, but internally only the first ICMP is processed by the OBS, and the other things are offloaded to the usage in a very seamless way. So the next topic, uh, VDPA, the Vertio Data Pass Acceleration, because because of the, the light side of the this figure, the the VPA bypass the host pad, host corner. So we don't have uh, some kind of uh, handle to control the traffic between the guest corner and the NIC. So that's why we use the switch dev to control the VPA data pass. Uh, so VPA is a uh, high performance network IO high performance network IO technique uh, by bypassing the host corner and providing the direct access to the network device. Uh, in the QM emulation mode, you copy the link buffer again and again to interact with the tap device. But in the corner VOST, which is the default v mode in Kubot, the link buffer inside the guest VM is mapped to the corner VOST thread memory. And then the interaction with the tap device is done inside the corner space. In VPA, the link buffer of the guest VM is directly mapped to the NIC. The NIC directly access the link buffer through the DMA, uh, which is on the host memory. So here we see the corner VPA architecture. So the VPA framework abstract the underlying underlying VDPA devices to support different types of hardware. So the upper layer of the VDPA framework is vendor independent so that you can do, for example, live migration between the node. So this architecture operates in two different modes. Uh, one is left for type of VDPA, which is for bare metal or container. Uh, the host in this mode, the host kernel utilized the Vertio net 
uh, the VDPA devices likewise other uh, common network interfaces because we directly bind the volatile net driver at the kernel space. But the, the, the light side, the second option is Fios VDPA, which is uh, for virtual machine. So how we used VDPA achieves host bypass as well as vendor independency. So the security is behind the NIC vendors. The NIC vendors implement the Voltaire standard inside the hardware logic so that it can process the link buffer of the guest VM device driver inside the hardware. So the control pass becomes a memory address translator between the guest VM and the NIC because the guest VM does not know about the underlying infrastructure, just the guest VM described the ring buffer with its own guest physical address. So, but the memory access that the NIC can access is host physical address. So the memory address uh, of the both components are different. So the mapping between the two address is done by Vyost VDPA framework and is recorded into the IOMMU as a cache, which is memory, mem memory management unit for IO device. Also the control pass relays the notifications such as kick or interrupt from and to the hardware. So if you want to enable VDK, the first load the kernel modules and uh, for example, MRX5 VDP module, and then uh, load the Voltaire VDP or Reost VDP. Left one is bare metal, or cont bare metal container, and the right is for VM. So if you load the Reost VDP and create a resource on the VDP framework, then you will see the Reost VDP zero device under the device directory. So to understand better, I created a containerized VM manually. And what you need is to pass the just a Vyost VDP zero device, the character device. Uh, then the QMU will do the limiting things. For example, preparing the vert queue and memory to installation and so on. So after that, the QMU creates the virtual net device backed by the Vyost VDP. So I will repeat the same thing on the Clipboard. So, by the way, inside VM, uh, maybe this is my issue. So, you will see the normal virtual net network interface inside the VM, and you don't know whether it is backed by Vyost or VDPA or Voltaire emulation. Uh, I want this demo on Ampere Ultra Max, which is ARM CPU, but there are some issues when I create a containerized VM VDPA. I have to uh, for to rebind the device driver to send and receive packets correctly after uh, booting the guest VM. So I should try the same processor on the other type of CPUs to figure out what the problem is correctly. So the next topic is about the cool bolt. Uh, we repeat the same process as described before on the cool bolt. First, we prepare the link resources on each node and bind the pod resources to the VM. Uh, thanks to the rich ecosystem of Kubernetes networking plumbing working group, we can automate the first two topics by the SRV network SRIOV network operator and Mortos CNI and OBS CNI. Uh, for the last thing, I implemented the Kubelt network binding plugin just for the Vyost VDPA. So let's see how SRIOV network operator works. Uh, it allows us to define policies for managing NIC resources. This configuration ensures that each node is correctly set up with the necessary SRV and we use to VDP and switch the settings. Uh, we know that this, this configura configuration is a sort of command like this. 
So next, Mertos and OBE and I worked together to prepare secondary network interface for a pod. First, you prepare an OBS bridge on each node and then declare this OBS network CR specific, specifying the bridge name. Also, you can add more options to this CR, for example, uh, MTO or VLAN and so on. Uh, then the SRV network operator will create a network attachment definition that is a part of Mertus. So when we create a path, the Mertus select an interface from the resource pool and invoke OVS CNI. The OVS CNI recognize whether it is interface, whether this interface is legacy mode or switch dev mode. If it is a switch dev mode, it attaches the representer to the OBS bridge if there is a representer. In this figure, ETH 0 V3. After that, uh, make the VM utilize the Vyost VDK. Uh, there is a very nice presentation about Kubert network and it interface model. He's the second presenter of today's session. Uh, he explained the front end, back end case by case very kindly. So let's assume the bridge mode, you can connect the VF network interface to the VM through the bridge. Uh, sorry, there is typo, the bridge, ah, ah, no, no, no typo, sorry. <laughs> because the Kubert support this model and many example use this left side bridge model. But you cannot connect the VOS bridge pay to the VM. There is no default network interface model in Kubert. So you have to create a new network binding plugin for this. So that's why Kubert designed network binding plugin. So to activate, to activate the network binding plugin, we specify the network binding plugin in the feature gate. Uh, also, we had the sidecar image URL for the plugin that we implemented for this download for this and download API. So in the VM perspective, we specified the network binding plugin that we added it uh, instead of the bridge model. So the network binding plugin creates a report domain XML definition for the network interface. In this case, we used free, free DPA. The hook side call reads the network information that Moltos allocated to this path from the download API. And the hook side call also reads the Kubelt VM definition and compares it to the network info to find the corresponding pre-used VDPA device. Uh, then the sidecar creates and appends the report XML to the VOS to BDK. The virtual launcher receives the modified XML and then creates a VM. So this slide illustrates how the sidecar brings network interface information from the outside of the uh, sidecar. Uh, the detailed mechanism is well described in the PR uh, below and the documentation. Uh, so the Kubert parses the multiple annotation and first and bring the device info uh, to uh, bring it into its own annotation. So that is Kubert.io network info. Then the Kubert exposed the annotation to the volume by using download API, and the sidecar mounts the volume to read the annotations. Uh, to, uh, the main purpose is to get the real speed API pass, and for example, mail address. So, uh, yes, that's the overall architecture includes. Uh, Link resource managed by the SRV network operator and network resources prepared by the Multus and OBS CNI and the network binding plugin integrating the VOS to BDPA into the Kubert domain. So thank, 
thanks to the rich ecosystem, we can manage all the resources in the Kubernetes way instead of the manual command. So that's all. In summary, we covered the Kubernetes VDPA workflow from host to path to domain. Uh, we talked about underlying components such as switch step and VDPA. So to fully utilize hardware upload as well as controllability of the VDPA data paths. And then we combine the components to the Kubernetes with the network binding plugin. For now, we have some issues, but I believe that that issues are not directly related with the network binding plugin. So you can turn on some more options for better performance, such as multi queue or uh, the queue size of the 3D play interface. And we should modify the privilege to access free host 3D play device. Uh, uh, because as, as you've seen before, I activate the network binding plugin as well as root privilege in the future gateway because of the access problem. So I should find how to solve that. And, and then after solving the Voltaio net driver rebinding issues inside the VM, maybe it is related with my CPU, Ampere Ultra Arm. And after that, we should support the live migration. Uh, yes, thank you for your attention, and I am now open to any questions. Oh, so let's see. Uh, uh, how did you plan to manage the automatic orchestration of the tenant Kubernetes? Uh, maybe. Uh, be because of the multi-tenancy, so I think uh, the second session of the today and uh, the Jian Li's presentation last year will describe about this issue more precisely. <laughs> and what are you using for your overlay network? or mix blue field ah i am using connectx and i configured the uh, genf tunneling in this example but you can use vxn genf gre and any other things so every every tunnel as i know, as I know every tunnels are offloaded by the even if you use the connectx uh, it it operates uh very well and also it can operate it can offload uh, contract and header relight and so uh, so many other things. Uh, do you plan to OSS your network by the plugin? Oh yes, after fixing some issues as I described in the last slide. Mm -hmm. How's your experience with offloading on CX6? Uh, I feel it is really great. So so we have we had uh, our own uh, SDN controller uh, making a uh, obvious flow rule, and some format of the flow rules are not offloaded. But uh, if you find out how to convert to the another type of another format of the obvious flow, then you can offload uh, most of uh, rules. Mm -hmm. Mm. Who does provide the BIOS to prepayX device? Uh, have you tried non root device support from your ah? Yes, uh, oh, oh, ah. uh, I tried non root device, but uh, the report cannot create a VM because of the uh, permission denied error. So as I know, the Maltus and, in fact, I, I don't know which component especially uh, give the, move the uh, access to the dev VOS to VDPA to the inside the pack. So sorry about that. Uh, have you tried live migration VMs with 
this title of Phoenix. So uh, no, not yet, uh, because of the errors uh, of the after putting the Nick drive uh, after putting the VM. So I have to unbind the Bertionet driver and rebind the once again. So after that, the network interface operates well. So for example, you move a VM from host A to host B, and even though you did a live migration, you should uh, rebind the device driver at the host B. So there is no, uh, it is not useful in the live migration case. So I should fix the bug first. Uh, from the observable, observability perspective, could OBS or other tools come in? Uh, yes, so that is not related to the OBS CNI, but you can copy, uh, maybe tomorrow uh, the other presenter will introduce how to copy the uh, packet from of the V app to the another V app. So, for example, you can copy the packet of the V app one to the V app three or four, or otherwise you can copy the all the packets and encapsulate and go to the another node through the Ethernet port. To be sure, uh, no, I am running the. Deep the OBS in uh, kernel mode, not a DPTK mode. Uh, so uh, I might just have to stop you there. Uh, apologies uh -huh. to anyone who has an unresolved question. If you do have an unresolved question, please put it into the virtualization chat and ping uh, Taekyung. Um, thank you very much for that talk. That uh, was very wonderful. Uh, thank you.